Hi, I'm going to talk about the Basel IV reforms for credit risk. Uh, Basel IV reforms are relevant for all kinds of risk. However, uh, this video will be focused more on uh, credit risks. I'll uh, touch upon the impact on other forms of risk also, for example, on market risk, on uh, counterparty credit risk uh, and operational risk. But uh, the focus will be more on the credit risk side. <clears throat> so what is uh, Basel IV? It's uh, a follow from the Basel III. Uh, Basel III came into existence after 2008 financial crisis. Many reforms were made at that time. Uh, however, after a few years, regulators felt that uh, there are still some shortcomings and therefore uh, a revision is needed. And hence Basel III uh, revision uh, was proposed and that was then called as Basel IV. It's stricter than Basel III. Uh, it's, there are more stringent uh, regulations and uh, as a result of which there will be a significant impact on the banks uh, on various uh, level, right? On the level of uh, their capital position, uh, their profitability, etc., etc. Some will have more uh, impact than the others for example the european union banks will have a higher impact compared to their counterparts from the us because uh, in the us not many are using uh, the internally developed model whereas in the european union many banks especially the big banks are using the internally developed models for capital calculation and they, they will be impacted the most right uh, and then it also depends on the portfolio uh, right some portfolio will get impacted more than the others for example, the corporate, the large corporate uh, portfolio will have a higher impact compared to say the uh, medium sized corporate or uh, or the retail SME part. Okay, um, the corporate financing will have an impact because of a pricing point of view, because if the capital increases, then it will have an impact on the pricing. Some banks will be less competitive in the market. We will discuss more about that in the subsequent slides. Okay, so why was this even needed? Uh, well, the regulators felt that, you know, there is a huge variability in the capital assessment by the banks, the ones who, who are using the internal models. And that is quite expected because the internal models uh, are developed uh, somewhat differently in, in banks. And you can expect a bit of a variation in the level of capital, even though the portfolio as such are not you know, very, very different. Now that's a problem because regulators are finding it very difficult to understand as to why even at the um, similar size bank, similar profile, you see a, a difference in the capital level for a given type of portfolio. Uh, and that is a concern. So in order to harmonize, uh, you know, the capital level across banks, regulators felt that we need to have more stringent regulation. We need to have caps uh, on the you know capital level rwa level and we also need to have some level of um, harmonization some you know type of portfolio for example uh, large corporates uh, medium sized corporates above 500 uh, million turnover uh, and for example for financial institution for specializing lending you know there are some new rules we will talk more about that and that will you know harmonize a, a, a lot of things especially the capital uh, the regulatory capital um, and internal models normally they assign lower risk weights compared to the regulatory prescribed estimates right so banks even have an incentive to build model in such a way that you know the regulatory capital is is much low and there are many subjective factors also for example the margin of conservatism is something that is not a very 100% uh, science, right? Um, so it, there is a bit of a subjectivity involved and therefore you see a variation of capital there. So in order to mitigate, you know, the model risk, uh, model risk as in because the, the way you develop the model uh, will have an impact on the final capital level uh, and that is a model risk. Um, having variation in the margin of conservatism is a model risk. So that, in order to mitigate that, uh, banks, regulators have introduced uh, different types of floors. We will discuss more about them. Okay. Uh, 
some major highlights uh, the most important thing from the basel 4 from a credit risk point of view is that for corporates above 500 million in turnover they cannot use the uh, internal model um, primarily for sgd and ead uh, they still can use the pd um, and uh, basel 4 introduces uh, outflow for low uh, to ensure that the rwa from banks internal models is at least 72.5% of the standardized approach capital so standardized approach capital is the regulatory prescribed uh, methodology right so the capital estimates from the internal models advanced irb models should be at least 72.5% of the standardized level capital so that uh, floor is now introduced and for many banks this will increase the capital uh, by at least 20% um, so that is a big concern now for many many organization many banks in europe especially in europe uh, besides there are some changes made to uh, the credit value adjustment um so that's the cva uh, and operational risk uh, frameworks so on um, on on various other risks also there are uh, changes made to the uh, rules the way the capital is calculated for example on the market risk side you have many changes on the operational risk framework there are many changes on counterparty credit risk also there are so many changes but we will focus more on the credit risk side okay so how will it affect the banks at a global level uh, the impact will be somewhat limited if you uh, take into account all the banks across the globe the ones who are following the basel uh, norms basel guidelines uh, at an overall level things will not be that bad however it will impact the european union banks because most of them are using the internally developed capital models whereas in the us uh, the impact is much less and it is estimated that the capital impact in the us will be somewhat around uh, 2% whereas it could be as high as 19% for the european banks so that's a significant difference in the level of impact right compared to uh, the us the cost of capital will increase for the banks that means there will be funding issues uh, because in order to uh, do the business the banks will need higher level of capital and they need uh, to fund this um, and uh, in order to get the money because it's not always easy to uh, fund from their deposits right uh, banks will all need external funding as well and that will be a challenge for them return on capital will decrease because uh, because of the higher capital requirement and in order to be equally competitive in the market i think banks will then have to uh, you know adjust the risk return uh, their their return on the capital and and that will you know affect the profitability of the banks and corporate uh, with 500 million uh, turnover and above that will be uh, affected and the ones without credit rating will be the hardest hit the ones with credit rating will somewhat be saved although they will still be affected um, because of the higher capital requirement um now these clients cannot be assessed to advanced irb models uh, only foundation level firb and and uh, standardized approach can be used for capital assessment for you know these clients with uh, turnover above 500 million and they will be the hardest uh, hit the ones without credit rating will be even more uh, badly affected and the new deadline for european union is 1st of uh, january 2025 so i think there is a two years of delay uh, yeah because of various reasons among others the corona crisis and so on and so forth okay um there's so many um, areas in which uh, basel 4 will have an impact on various uh, risk uh, various types of risk for example on the market risk side you tell have an impact on the fundamental review of trading book the frtv um then uh, there is a revision to the standardized approach uh, so there is something called uh, a revision to the standardized approach uh, from the credit risk point of view 
okay so for example the regulatory rating based uh, risk weight for banks and and corporates um you know uh, that means there will it's there's not a f just flat uh, uh weight given to the standardized approach calculation for uh, for uh, you know banks and and corporate um, it is based on the ratings actually corp the the uh, the uh, some sort of ratings okay the credit ratings okay so there are many changes made to the standardized approach okay we will talk about that in few more slides in detail actually and you also have uh, other sort of uh, changes also for example uh, advanced irb floor on the operational risk side uh, so there is a removal of advanced measurement approach the ama approach which was wise quote famous actually on the if risk inside also there may be some impact okay um so on the standardized approach uh, there is an introduction of the standardized credit risk assessment approach and we will talk about where the scra or the standardized credit risk assessment approach is applicable right there are scenarios in which it is applicable not always and then there is introduction of risk weight for small and medium uh, size enterprises and investment get uh, corporates so for sme uh, clients and investment get corporate that means good clients really good clients right um, a a plus plus you know that sort of credit rating um, companies like iba um, shale you know british petroleum you know that sort of companies um, there is a introduction of risk weight uh, based on the rating um, and then for residential real estate uh, there is also a change risk weights will vary based on the loan to value ratio of the mortgage and that will uh, replace the flat weighting of 35%. Right now in Basel 3, there's a 35% flat uh, risk weight for standardized approach for residential real estate. That will be replaced by uh, uh, the risk weight based on the LTV. And there are some breakups there uh, based on, so that will be implemented uh, and that will replace the flat weighting of 35%. Um, and then introduction of LTV ratio approach to replace a flat weighting of 100% in some cases. Here you see the details of the different uh, floors. Uh, well, these are these are not for standardized approach. These are for advanced IRB and and for uh, and and foundation IRB. For example, for probability of default for corporate. The floor was 0.3%. It is going up to 5% now. So the minimum PD will be 5% going forward in in uh, Basel 4. For retail customers, um, for mortgages, right? Um, so for mortgages, you have uh, transactors, revolver, and others. You have different sort of floor, right? It could range from 5% uh, up to 10%. Right. On the LGD side, you see also um, different kind of uh, breakup, especially for the secured ones. 0% for financial assets, where the collateral is financial, is the weightage use is uh, 0%. For receivable is 10%, uh, for commercial real estate is 10%, for other physical assets 15%. If it is unsecured, then it is 25%. And by the way, this is just for the corporate. For retail, <coughs> Um, for unsecured it is 50% uh, whereas it could vary for uh, depending on collateral types it's exactly the same as the corporate okay and you also have floors uh, for the EAD which is very new actually it wasn't there for example for off balance it like 50% of the off balance it exposure using the application of CCF in the standard approach now so that that will be something uh, new uh, which wasn't the case by the way in the past and then uh, some adjustment uh, made to the LGD for foundation approach. Okay. Uh, now here is this comparison like before uh, Basel 4 and after Basel 4. You have uh, financial collateral eligible, it remains the same. But for receivables, there is a uh, decrease, right, from 35% to 25%. For resident real estate, it has come down from 35% to 20%. And other physical assets from 40% to 25% but do note that there is also an increase in the PD from the PD side so it's not that a decrease in the LGD floor 
will have uh, an impact a, a positive impact on the capital it will probably have a well positive negative depending on from which side but yes um, there may be an increase there may be a decrease some banks may, may have a decrease in the uh, capital level uh, but other banks may have an increase depending on the situation there right um, and LGD parameter for some unsecured exposures uh, to non-financial corporates is adjusted from 45% to 40%. And there are more changes. For example, we have already discussed about this, the large and mid-sized corporates with uh, revenue above 500 million. Uh, they were under advanced IRB in many banks. Many other banks were using foundation and standardized approach. All three approaches were um, applicable to this particular portfolio but after basel 4 advanced irb cannot be used any longer only foundation and standardized approach can be used for this portfolio for banks and other financial institution is the same thing right only firb uh, and standardized approach sa approach are applicable not the advanced irb for equity advanced irb approach cannot be used only standardized approach can be used so neither firb nor AIRB. So for specialized lending, whether it's object finance, project finance, you know, this uh, type of portfolio, uh, advanced IRB approach uh, used to be used uh, and uh, it still can be used, right? All three approaches can be used. It's still under discussion in, in some form of the, of the other, uh, but uh, I know many banks are using advanced IRB approach modeling for uh, their specialized lending portfolios. So I, I think that this will probably not change. So banks will need to raise more capital in order to fund the business because there will be higher capital requirement. And uh, this is a double whammy because for many European banks, uh, there is already um, higher capital level because of the SREP, which is the supervisory review and evaluation process SREP. That has already increased some level of capital and so capital threshold will increase further because of Basel IV. So that will uh, be a big uh, concern for many banks. And, and in order to uh, implement all these things, there will be a need of massive effort because it's not just about using the new estimates uh, because your, your IT system have to be uh, updated. Your calculation steps have to be updated. All these things have to be then validated properly. There will be supervisory review, etc, etc. All these things will cost a lot of money for the banks and a lot of effort also. Data collection will be a big deal actually because for many portfolios, for example, for banks, uh, all banks used to do is that you use a very flat rate, but now you have to uh, gather the rating data for uh, banks many for many banks there is no rating data also and yeah so these questions are still open and uh, data collection will be a very very difficult thing for um, most banks okay so that's most more or less about uh, Basel 4 and the potential impact it will have on uh, bank's profitability but uh, good thing is that it will only strengthen the capital level of different banks and the banking system will then be more robust um, so the most banks are um, having issues actually at the moment implementing it but uh, i think there is some level flexibility uh, right first of uh, january to 25 25 is the deadline into in uh, European Union. However, uh, there is some flexibility. I think for some of the areas, they can still extend. Uh, there is a gradual approach uh, to implement uh, the changes over a period of two, five to six years.